like to call the order to order the Master Association Board of Directors meeting for Stony Brook of Estero, a golf course community. It is June the 20th, 6.31 p.m. Rules of civility are in effect. And right now I'd like everyone to stand to give the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, we have a little different order today because we are one director shy. Excuse um, me, Dennis? Still, yes. I just had some requests from the audience. Everybody is not familiar with everybody. Would you please just go through and introduce yourselves? Sure. Go ahead, Mark. Mark Russett. John Detterbeck. Todd Madden. Dennis Oldani. Melissa Mahmood. Daryl Grigg. And hopefully soon we'll have a seventh person. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ah. So the first thing on the agenda is the appointment of a new director to the board. Do I have any nominations? I'd like to nominate Kelly Moretti. I second that. Anyone else? Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Is Kelly here? Here's your homework. Thank you. <laughs> There's no test at the end, don't worry. Oh, no. no. Please join the board. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, I would now like to uh, establish a quorum, Todd. Yeah, yes, Mr. President, a quorum has officially been established with the addition of the seventh person. All members are present. Okay, thank you. We are now going to have a resident open forum. We're going to ask everyone to stick to the five minutes this evening. We have a, um, a lot to cover here, and we're going to be here a long time this evening. So we would like you to keep it to five minutes. Uh, first on the list is Jewel. Please come up to the podium and tell us what street you live on. No, I don't think we do addresses. Just nope. Nope. No addresses. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Because you know I'm short. Like Carly. Like Carly. Of course, like Carly. Perfectly challenged. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jewel Ferber. I live on Pembroke Run. Uh, that's for the three or four of you that don't know me yet. Uh, I think everybody else does over the last 20 years. Between, hello? You get fined. Shut that cell phone off. <laughs> uh, I'm here this evening because uh, I want to let you know, I know many of you have read or heard things about our activities committee. Our activities committee is very, very active. That's what the name is for. We have two separate committees. One is for kids and families. And that particular committee are doing things like uh, this morning's coffee and chat. And we had a record 35 people this morning, so that's going to continue all year. Uh, in July, we have an ice cream social. Uh, we have something for the little kids called tuxedos and tutus. So there's a lot of things. We have a magician coming in where it will be a family function. Um, so we have a lot of things going on. And we have a very, very active adult committee. Uh, Sue Schroeder is chairman. I am vice chairman. And Carol O'Donny is our secretary. And uh, the three of us have just done so many things in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we have acts coming in you've never seen, at least not here. Um, we have an impersonator this year. Um, we have a doo wop group, a salsa band. Uh, we have a magician, an illusionist. 
And of course, backed by popular demand, we have Johnny Rogers. This is in addition to a few other things that you'll find out about. Starting in August, there will be a calendar outside. It is going to have all of the adult activities and all of the family activities with the dates and times. It may go in the uh, monthly newsletter. And if you don't read it, read it. It's got everything that's going on in this community. So you don't have to annoy Tammy and Nicole. All you have to do is look at your newsletter. It's all brought up to date. Um, what we do need is we need some volunteers. We need volunteers to help us to set up for activities, to run the activities, and then to clean up afterwards. And if anyone is interested, uh, you can either see Carol or myself, give us your name, phone number, and we will be in touch with you. So, uh, thank you, Jill. That's my time. Thank you. Dennis. Lloyd Subby, Braxfield Loop. This is in regards to the lights that are on the pickleball court, tennis court, and the ball field. Several years ago, the board uh, decided to put a program together as to how things were controlled. For the, tent, for the ball field, you have to make a reservation through the office. And it was also decided that at 9.30 all lights will be off. And the reason for that is there's several homes across the street and they don't need the lights on in the family room, bedroom, or whatever, late at night. About three or four weeks ago, I got a call from a neighbor, and they wanted to know if I knew the name, the number of the um, security, either the rover or the guardhouse. And he told me it's because the lights were still on. So. I do have a key for the electrical room. I uh, talked to the security people. They got the people off the court that were still playing at 10.30 at night, and I shut the lights off and changed the timer. And I want to keep that as the way it is because, like I say, we got people living across the street, and we don't need the lights on all night just to accommodate somebody that wants to play pickleball at 10 o'clock at night. And um, the other thing I want to remind, I understand one person has decided they're going to do some changing out there. If you're going to do any changing at all, you better be a licensed electrician or mechanic or and have a insurance. I used to be able to do work here to try to save money for some of the community and uh, several of the people realize what was going on. I can all, no longer do that. No one can. You got to have a license and you have to be insured. Thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. <laughs> Sharon? It's okay, you can go next, Sharon. <laughs> No, that's okay. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. No. Go ahead. I did not. I should have looked closer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sharon Ierly. I live on Weymouth. And all I want to say is I don't know who it was that got it done, but it's deeply appreciated that the drains got cleaned, cleared out, or whatever on Weymouth that we're not swimming anymore. So thank you. For, for the record, that was our uh, manager, Tammy, who was able to get people to jump through hoops even though they had other people scheduled. Mm -hmm. And Tammy twisted some arms. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, 
I'm Sharon Fenstermaker, and I live at 21330 Lancaster Run. I've got two issues. Um, the first one is illegal dumping. Um, I've got a quick solution for that. Illegal dumping is what I'm talking about at the condos, because we have dumpsters. But my solution would be if the HOA would bring their dumpster back out to the parking lot, then the single family homeowners would use your dumpster and not ours. I brought that to the attention. I didn't personally, but um, my next door neighbor did. I caught a gentleman while I was washing my car um, throwing debris into their dumpster. Pinecrest, <coughs> excuse me, Pinecrest 4. I'm Pinecrest 3. <coughs> excuse me. And um, so he came down here, brought it to the attention of the office. I, I, I approached him first. And um, I said, do you live here? And he goes, yeah. And I said, hmm. He was in a golf cart. We don't have golf carts in the condo community. So I said, oh, really? And I called off the number. He goes, my mom does. And it's like, no, you don't live here, and neither does your mom. So that resident in Pinecrest 4 came down here and talked to someone in the office. <clears throat> and the solution was that because he didn't see it, that they would send a friendly reminder. Actually, I don't, Sharon, I'd I like don't to think that's to a that. proper way to handle that situation. I'll add to your time, but that is not correct. The gentleman was throwing a turkey in the dumpster. They were fined for that. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kern. And we Kern. don't send kindly letters to anybody. I'm sorry, on Mrs. That. Kern, that is incorrect. What I dug out, I actually was lying over the dumpster. So you with went my dumpster shovel, diving to get it? With my shovel and pulled out two bags. And what did those two bags have in it? Debris. The person had purchased another property in here, and they were doing remodeling. So what was in those two bags was either things that they were taking out or things that they were putting in. And you had a cart number. I did. We would have automatically fined them. I disagree with I'm what sorry. you're saying. I'm sorry. I'll bring the gentleman here. As a matter of fact, are you here? Because you know who well, I'm talking about. Well, it's neither here nor there, Sharon. Yeah. We can go on, but I would have definitely have fined him if you gave us a number. Okay. He did. He gave the number to, all right, you want me to point it out? He gave the number to Miss Nicole. She looked it up. That's how she knew that that person that owned that golf cart had already purchased another place, and he was doing some remodeling. Sharon, Sharon we'll look into that. Thank you very much. Do you much. have the cart number? We, well, thank no, you. Don't no, no, I'm not saying it out loud. Well, finish your... Okay. Um, the next thing is leasing. We have a terrible, terrible issue in the condos with illegal leasing. This has been going on for as long as I can remember. Every time I brought it to the attention of whomever happened to be on the board at that particular time, they come right back at me and say, that's a condo issue. Well, I kind of sort of disagree because what is being done is they're illegally leasing without even knowing who those people are. It's word of mouth. So they come down here and give false information, and then they're told, oh, that's all right, go ahead, go ahead. So everybody seems to think it's just a condo issue. It's not. It's a safety issue. We have no idea who is, going, who is leasing those condos. And we have children all over the place. So you're putting their safety in jeopardy. I'm going to ask you a quick question. They're renting them or they're leasing? They're leasing. And the, our rules, along with yours, and I brought your rules, and they're basically well, the they're same. they're your rules, too. I mean, they're, they're not and they're, ours. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon? They're your rules, too. Sharon, Sharon how are you distinguishing exactly. against family exactly. members you're, visiting? You're right, Mr. Because I've right, had several Dennis. people come up saying that you've got on them about family members staying at their place. I'm sorry, she lied to you. Okay, hold on. They were not hold family on, members. Hold on, hold on. You have people renting by the month? No, by week. the week. Okay. So Two they're, weeks. So they're renting. Over a weekend. Okay, let's, let's stop. They're renting, not leasing. There's no lease. It's not a long term. No, it's, no. It's, it's, there's it's no paperwork. Rent. Okay. It's a weekly rental. Which you're not allowed to do, uh, according I, to no, you. I, I understand. I understand. And that. I can confirm that does happen, yes. And we have fined people for that before. But I will tell you from being on Port Rush, some of the policing has to be done by your association. 
This master board cannot police all of that. So when you find things that are happening like that, my suggestion is to put it down in the form of an email, send it to myself, and send it to Tammy, and we'll look into it the best we can. I, I know it's a problem. Okay. It's a huge problem. Yeah, but it's also hard to stop. We've fined people thousands and thousands of dollars, but you know what? They make tens of thousands of dollars, so they just consider it part of themselves doing business. Because you do find a single family home and we, for we illegal. We find other folks also. So then I feel that you should be able to have our backs uh -huh. and find the condo, uh, the people that own condos that are illegal. Well, there's no we, difference. We, we've done that. We did. Just yeah, last, we've done that. Just sure. last month, uh, Lancaster, there was a fine issue. Yeah, $100 so, a day. $100, so we are doing it, Chair. You just, oh, I, you then you aren't order. doing it in Pinecrest 3. Okay. Uh, well, I... I I don't know which one if we if we are made aware of it. Okay, that, so this is suggesting. Right. Tell, uh, tell me, copy Tammy, and we'll do the best we can to look into it. I can't promise anything because we're not there every second of the day. Okay, okay. I have but a solution to that. Out, there will be a fine. Okay. okay, I have a solution to that also. Okay, I will take it upon myself. I will deal directly with Tropical Isle, mm -hmm. RKM, Susie Bianchi, our secretary Megan and the GG who takes care of leasing or purchasing. Mm -hmm. I will do that. And I'm also going to have Tropical Isle send all 52 of our homeowners a letter stipulating these are the rules. Right. But what I want you to do is to guarantee me that if I bring something to you, that you will follow through and yes, find those we'll people. Follow through with okay. whether or not we can find them is another question, but we will follow through. We can't just willy-nilly find somebody because you said so. We if they don't have proper paperwork. That's what we have to establish. You okay. want me to guarantee something I can't guarantee. Okay. What I will tell you is we will look into it, and if we can find them, we will. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I will have my one of my vice presidents, I have two. Okay. Diane Motley will gladly work with Mrs. Kern and Miss Nicole. Okay. So Diane and I will work directly with each other. Okay. Diane will work with Mrs. Kern, Miss Nicole, and I will definitely and work. We will, we will and do, we will send out letters stipulating. We will do everything we can to stop. Okay. Dennis, I would also. Uh, okay, thank you very much. If I could also be copied on the stuff, um, Sharon, that your sub association sends to the homeowners, that will only back up our paperwork more. Thank you. Yeah. Diane will do deal with you. Okay, Michael. Boy. Hi, I'm Mike Voigt from uh, Braxville Loop. I'm a fairly new resident here, but uh, I see that HO fees have gone up from 400 and some dollars to 600 and some. And we have about 1,000 uh, residences here, so we're, we're looking at $800,000 more to the revenue for the HOA fees, correct? Were you here for the meeting we talked about? Comcast? No, I wasn't there, so. Uh, okay, well, all of that fee is for Comcast. And I'm going to let John explain mm -hmm. it because he's closer than I am to it. Comcast. But you have to pay for months that you already are getting your internet bef before you were billed. But go ahead, John. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, finish your question and, mm -hmm. and then I'll, I'll get the direction. Well, I was just wondering, like, we're talking 1,000 residents, we're looking at $800,000 at least, I'm thinking. If, I'm, if my math is wrong, just let me know. But looking at an additional $800,000 to this community, that us as residents are putting forth, and I just want to, what, okay. what is that being used let, for rather than Comcast? Let me give you the, yeah. the clip note. We all want a nice community. I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I want to keep a nice community here, but, we'll talk. you know, I just want to make sure that we're spending it right. Okay. It's all getting spent in one place, so go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. We, when we, the contract was signed with Comcast has started on May 1, which was mm -hmm. in the second quarter of the year. Yeah. We'd already collected the second quarter of the year. Mm -hmm. So in order not to be in a deficit, we, uh, the board that was in place at the time opted to take the, the months completing the second quarter and roll them into the six months for the balance of the year so that we would be back on schedule. Essentially, it was about a $57 increase that most people were taking it out of one pocket and putting it into the other pocket because instead of paying themselves to Comcast, it was getting billed through the HOA. That's where the increase came from. It was $112 that yeah. it went up, and, or somewhere in that number, I'm going by memory. 
Um, and that increase was specifically for the third and fourth quarter of this year. Now uh -huh. when we get to next year and next year's budget where we have 12 months to spread the cost over, that should come down. Okay. Okay? I understand that. Uh, was it anything negotiated with Comcast to try to? Oh yes, it was a full contract. Okay. Okay. I just, want to, make sure, I just want to make sure you're fronting on this It was a five-year like contract, and for you know, the most part, out of us residents, we just want to make sure you guys are handling our money correctly. That's all we want to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks. Good. Thank you, Mike. I think we still have an information paper that lays it all out. Oh, that'd be great. That, yeah. So, all right, guys. No, no, understand. Your question has been asked many times, and it will be asked more. I'm sure. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I even asked it myself. Okay. okay. Uh, now we'll. Uh, Go over the waiver, either the waiver or the reading of the minutes from two separate meetings. First, the May um, 16th, 2023 meeting. Uh, I have a couple corrections on that one before we uh, make a motion. Uh, if you look at page two, down where it says, um, in the Covenants Committee with Bill Reynolds, it says, we discussed the state statute of signing members in July and update the wording. It, that makes no sense. I'm not exactly sure what it means. See what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Signing members? We discussed the state statute of signing uh, yeah, members. Yeah, I didn't. I actually did read them. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll figure that out and we'll correct it. So we'll, we'll add that to the to the corrections. Also on page four, at the very bottom, the very last line says, to be divided equally initially, then maintained thereafter. But we're talking about the funds and nowhere in there is the funds mentioned. On page four? Yeah, well, I guess it's four. One, two, three, four, yes. At the very bottom, Talking about activities committee, the very last line. It's page five for us. Oh, Thank page you. Five for you. Okay. Oh yeah, I just printed it on my or printer. Page six. Sorry. Oh, there five it is. or page six. This is off five my printer. Six. I'm sorry. At home. There we go. I won't say page numbers anymore. Then. <laughs> so it's to be divided equally. Oh. Initially, it's the um, existing funds is what's being divided. Okay. Then on what's my next page, where it says discussion under it says suggestion then discussion it says committees need to find research registration options is that what we wanted to say there find research or find registration options or research registration options we're not really yeah, trying to no, find the, the motion research. the motion was specifically for checks or venmo only for okay. registration that's in here yeah, but that one, that once again doesn't then, make any sense. Right. I think it, there was also consideration um, that goes up that there was about uh, the tickets, specific tickets. Or yeah, this is below all that. Okay. I think it's. I think it's what it's meant to do is strike the word fine. Yeah, I think if you strike the word fine, you're, we're fine. Okay. Okay. Then one last thing. I'm sorry. Um, on the committee approvals. Under Covenants Committee, I guess it is, um, where the motion is, this has me down as voting twice. And I'm not from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> it what shows page I is that on? Has anybody I found it? Seven? I voted nay. Seven. <laughs> uh, I think Sorry. I voted nay. <laughs> so I believe. Which one? Right here. Oh, I see that. Where I, you, 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 you didn't I vote voted at all. here. You just said, uh, you I thought I abstained. You abstained, yes. yeah. Okay. Abstained. That's what I thought I did, but okay. That's all. Sorry. No, that's fine. That's a good catch. I would tell her that <laughs> later. <Okay. Yeah. laughs> but yes, we want to correct. Do I have a motion to accept these as amended? Uh, I just wanted to okay, go back. Go Sorry. President. The Covenants Committee, I was actually at that meeting. I'm reading through it. Um, the specific meeting for that was for the flag statute. 
and that was the, they were discussing wording on changing the covenants themselves because they talk about limitations that the ARC has to approve where a flag goes, but the state statute is updated that says that you can put a flag pole wherever you want regardless of covenants. So that was for that discussion. And I think it was voting members because um, it was, they discussed the state statute of voting members with, by voting members in July. So that was, okay. So I think it was by voting members okay. in July. Uh, I just knew it didn't make any sense. And they wanted to send it yeah. <laughs> Anything else on this? Do I have a motion to accept them as amended? I motion to accept the meeting minutes as corrected. Uh, yeah. Second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I have to abstain. Opposed? I was not a member of the board at the time. Okay. Kelly, I assume you'll abstain also? Yes. Daryl, I assume you'll abstain yep. also? It's okay. Good catch. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Okay, we'll move to the um, special master board meeting of May 25th at 2 p.m. Uh, I saw nothing wrong with this. Did anyone else? Okay. Do I have a motion to accept these minutes as written? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All in favor? Oh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, now we're going to move on to officer reports. I'm going to um, deviate a hair from this. Uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to John Dutterbeck, our treasurer, and have him give a report on the audit of the activity committee before I make my president's remarks. John. Okay. Um, there, there had been a certain amount of disagreement as to where the account was in the way of totals. I went back to uh, essentially December 31st, 1918, or 2018. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why it took me wow. so long. <laughs> 2018. Okay. And went through and worked through every single month, taking every check, every deposit, every credit card purchase, going through each and every one of them. There were some that I questioned just simply by not knowing what they were specifically for. I got answers on those. When I was done, the account balanced exactly on the money that was there. I have to, I have to thank uh, the three people that were taking care of this account for a long time. They did it spotlessly. They did it with a great deal of respect and that's Bill Reynolds, Stanley back there, and Tammy. Um, the, the account, uh, and I looked at it from a standpoint if, if I was trying to, uh, trying to make money disappear, where would I try to do it? Um, you know, at, at being in business, I look at, at numbers all the time, and these, these books are on the money. So essentially, as of the end of the audit, and there is, that we, because the accounts have not been set up with Alliant yet, we're working on it with them, we're getting them set up. I'm now running two different spreadsheets to keep track of whatever we're doing. But essentially, as of the date that I finished this, which was Monday, um, we had $17,069.58. So any discussion about missing funds in, in the amount of $3,000 or something thereabouts, um, there's not, absolutely nothing to support it. And I'd be happy to sit down with anybody and let you look at my numbers. If, if you've got a question about it, but uh, I think this thing was handled, you know, it, it was handled above and beyond admirably, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, Jack. Uh, now I'm going to move into my comments. I'm going to actually read this comment because I don't want to ad lib or say anything the wrong way, so I'm actually going to read this. I apologize, I don't normally do that. To the residents of Stony Brook Estero, 
As newly elected president, I feel it is my duty to address the innuendos and rumors that were posted on social media sites about Stony Brook, Stony Brook board members. Three of our senior board members resigned, not in mass, but separately within a week. If you want to know why, please ask them. We don't know the full story. As far as missing money goes, there is no missing money as John reported from his audit of the activities funds. As of the day I asked, which anyone could have done, there was $17,426.71 in the account, more than the group posting on social media and others thought. The funds were not used for anything but activity events. The books were always open to Stony Brook members, yet none of the people posting on social media ever personally went to look at them. The four of us, right here, were elected in March. Our first meeting was in April, where a group of residents voiced their concerns about how the activities committee was being run. At the May meeting, the entire board unanimously passed an eight-part motion to address these concerns including splitting the committees, not allowing cash payments for our events, having a lion corporate cutting all checks. In addition, the board will not use any funds for any other purpose but activities, and a lion corporate will handle the accounting where it always should have been. We put our office staff in an untenable position. They are not accountants, and they never should have been assigned this task. Our president at the time then asked that all committee meetings be held in the community center room and available on Zoom. I personally asked the people concerned with, I'm sorry, people with concerns if they could wait till the June audit as some of us were on vacation. Instead, instead, all but two of them resigned and bashed the board on social media. I feel the board addressed most of the concerns shortly after they were brought up. Very few times does anyone get everything they want. The four of us, new to the board, want an apology from the residents who accused us of wrongdoing and we want it on the same social media on which we were bashed. Thank you for your time. Uh, the rest of my comments are very brief. Uh, Jewel pretty much stole my thunder on the adult committees, which I am the liaison for, so I won't go into that. Also, you're going to see later on in the meeting, we have a pretty substantial preserve problem that we're going to have to address and talk to folks about. So uh, I just want to uh, make you aware of that because it's going to, it's going to cost us some dough to, to fix it. So, uh, John, you want to do your regular treasurer's report? Yes, I'd love to. Okay, and cash on hand. It's six hundred seventeen thousand four hundred and six and forty nine cents in reserve. Two hundred and eighty seven thousand one hundred and seventy dollars eighty three cents for a total cash on hand of nine nine hundred and four thousand five hundred seventy seven dollars and thirty two cents. Year to date income nine thousand eight uh, nine eight nine ninety nine five point eight zero. Uh, just under a million. Uh, budgeted, it was 946811.10, which puts us uh, year to date income. We we're ahead by about $43,000 and change. And our year to date expenses actual was uh, $1,634.44. Our budget was the same as uh, budgeted for the income before which was 946 811 and 15 cents which put our variance uh, for year-to-date expenses at fifty three thousand eight hundred twenty three dollars and twenty nine cents so it, it, expenses are running a little bit higher than income but that goes as a general thing and I think that it's well within lines of what our budget should be We'll see that we have certain months that will um, move along very rapidly. I do have one additional item that I'd like to share. When I got on the board, it was suggested to me that uh, we, perhaps we needed to look at 
the cost of the street lights since they were out since September uh, from Ian. I started in March. Uh, I spent um, two calls every day when I was on vacation out of the country talking with Florida Power and Light. Uh, the success is that we were given a credit in this last month's billing. Our normal budgeted amount for billing for street lights was $4,666. Our actual bill for this month was $781.10. So we had a savings of over $3,800. Awesome. So if the question you, is if we're watching the money, yep. we're watching the awesome. money. Awesome. Thank you. The, um, that ended up being a, a credit. We only had 15 lights out, but after talking to them and uh, complaining about the fact that it took so long, they took it up to 26 lights for the six months, and we got the credit for that. And I realized we still have a couple lights that aren't operational, um, and I noticed a couple while I was driving around that we need to get the photo cells fixed on them. Um, but um, this is what we're doing to try to keep track of the money. Okay. Mark, do you have anything? No, not at this time. Uh, the Buildings and Grounds Committee uh, met prior to this board last month, and we discussed quite a few things. Um, the biggest thing that I wanted to bring to the board that the committee talked about was the CDD's project. I'm sure everybody sees is brand the new Calusia bushes along the fencing, along the front, and, uh, and, and man, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, the CDD approached the board about extending their bushes onto HOA property to go around the back of the ball field where the big shed is and that dirt is. 